go a little deeper, dig a little deeper. Um, you were out in the lobby here. When's the last time you've seen the movie? Uh, I, on, I don't know how to start this. I've seen it three times in the last month. <laughs> and, and I gotta tell you, the reasons are all different. I mean, one was playing at the Egyptian, and they, they showed that with Pumpkinhead, and, and I, I went there. <laughs> It was a hell of a mix. But, but, you know, and then another time, I think somewhere in another city, I've been on a book tour, so I'm a little delusional about what exactly happened when. But, <laughs> but I, 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 it, it kind of holds up. It's got an innocence about it. It's got a kind of, Catherine Bigelow is a, is a matriarchal director. I mean, it's not like working with a guy who talks to, um, you know, little stuffed animals while he's directing. <laughs> story in the book. Did that make any sense? Yeah. Tell, we'll tell that story. Let's see, you can't just drop that and then... Uh... There was a guy I worked with who had uh, stuffed animals in director's chairs while he worked. And I kept wondering, what the hell he's talking to? Me? Because, and, I, and I finally got so, uh, you know, curious about it that I went and bought a stuffed bear. And I came in that morning and ripped its head off right in front of me. And he said to me, Lance, that's not funny, man. That's not funny. Yeah, but he was covering their eyes, and he was like... And I said, all right, I, I surrender, man. Let's just finish this movie. Let's get it over with. Well, in the book, you don't mention what movie it was. Are you prepared to tell us? No, I don't want to tell anybody. That's I, mean, I, I, have no, I have no access to Brian. You know, I mean, if right. I said it, I don't know if that guy would ever work again. You know, I mean... Has he worked again? He works in the stuff factory. The stuff factory. <laughs> I don't know if he has ever worked, no. I don't know. But I don't want to. I don't want to work with him again. My, my ex-wife, uh, she's my ex-wife now, she was my wife then. We were doing a movie about a guy who comes in from another country and he, oh God, I'm gonna give this movie away. Uh, anyway, she, she said to me on the way there, I, I've been, she was really pissy with me and, and, and I said, what's the problem? And she said, I've been, I've been 14 hours on a cigarette without an airplane. I said, what? <laughs> she was, Withdrawal. She was in heavy withdrawal, so I put it in the movie. Everything that happens for real, I put in the movie. Right? The rest, you know, the rest is just some writer writing in the dark. You know. So. Anyway. Well, what, what do you think? Wait, so you've seen Near Dark a few times in the last one. Uh, what memories does it bring back for you? Well, I also see Bill Paxton. I see Jeanette. Um, what, what we wanted to do as a prequel to this movie. The minute we finished shooting, we wanted to do. We were already, Bill and I were already writing it in the hotel room where we were staying in Arizona. We wanted to do a prequel, like start, the minute this stops, let's go do the prequel. We were so enamored with each other and with the, with the material. And I remember, this is way before Twilight, you know, that, <laughs> that kissing Twilight. <laughs> I hate Twilight, man. <laughs> It's uh, uh, 30 Days of Nights. Yeah. Wow. When I saw that, I mean, I, I really, you know, it tested my masculinity because I saw that and these people were really vicious and they were really for real. But I thought that the whole movie's structure was just perfect, perfect. Everything about it, yeah. Surprisingly, you don't find that with the Twilight movies. <laughs> Would you like a bottle of blood? <laughs> So the prequel never happened, but... Uh... No, 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 but it's, it's it, you know, I'll tell you, a really interesting phenomenon has happened. <clears throat> I saw uh, Catherine uh, at a screening, you know, like a, a really early screening of this Hurt Locker. And she walked in, and she's like 6'2", very thin, you know. And I said, oh my God, this has been years, years and years ago that we did the movie. And she looked the same. And I said, Catherine, are you a vampire? <laughs> you can tell me. It's like asking a dog to talk to me. I won't tell anybody else, I promise you. Are you a vampire? <laughs> she just smiled and I went, oh shit. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the prequel. Uh, the only way the prequel could ever happen, there's a very interesting phenomenon taking place. Dark Horse Comics asked me to write uh, a comic book. And that's because in, in uh, in this book, all of the art in it is from comic book artists like Sienkiewicz and, and all these, Tim Bradstreet, and 
Eric Powell, all these guys just, they wanted to be in this book, so they just said, we're going to do it. And they sent me all these drawings, and they're all in there. I never asked them, which movie do you want to do? And anyway, uh, Bradstreet did, uh, did Near Dark. You know, it did a beautiful job on it. But my point of my story. Uh, the prequel, Catherine Bigelow's <laughs> Yes, uh, they want me to do a comic book of the prequel to Near Dark. Now, we're, we're, I, I put a feeler out to Catherine Bigelow and said, look, if you don't want me to do it, we won't do it. But if you, if you give us the nod, Bill Paxson and I are going to do it. You know, we're going to talk about it because it is... Uh, it, it, Bill and I got obsessed on where do they come from? Where did, this, where did Jesse Hooker come from? And he started building this family. And it, it, we came up with some great stuff, and so did Bill. And mine was that there was, I was in the, the Southern Army, not Army, but Navy. And I was on an ironclad, and there was this terrible battle, cannonballs flying everywhere and hitting the deck, and the splinters were killing all the men, and, and we lost the battle. And so we ended up drifting through the marshes at night in the Chesapeake Bay, and, and harpies started feeding on the dying men, not the dead men, but the dying men. And my chest was busted wide open and steaming into the night, and a harpy hovered over me and took pity on me. And that's where it started. So th th this was the work we did to, to figure out where the hell we came from because you can't play a vampire. You can only play a nocturnal nomad that is thinning out the herd or the weak or the nasty, you know, for, for food. But not like Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think...